debate, the Honourable Member Davenport. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I will be sharing my time with the Honourable Member for Vaughan Woodbridge. It's a true privilege for me to add my voice to the debate on Bill C-26, an act respecting cybersecurity, on behalf of the residents of my riding of Davenport, of which many have written to me through the years about their concern around cybersecurity and the need for additional protections uh, at all levels of government. Madam Speaker, this bill represents the latest step in the government's constant work to ensure our systems, rules, and regulations are as strong and up-to-date as possible. That's especially important when dealing with a topic as fluid and rapidly evolving as cyber technology. We've known for quite some time that we would need to be constantly vigilant on this issue. In 2013, the government established the Security Review Program operated by the Communication Security Establishment. In 2016, we con conducted public consultations on, on cybersecurity. In 2018, we released the National Cybersecurity Strategy. In 2019, we allocated $144.9 million through Budget 2019 to develop a critical cyber systems framework. And in 2021, we completed an interdepartmental 5G security examination which recommended an updated security framework to safeguard Canada's telecommunications system. Madam Speaker, a cornerstone of the updated framework is an evolution of the security review program. It would allow for continued engagement with Canadian telecommunications service providers and equipment suppliers to ensure the security of Canadian telecommunication networks, including 5G. As a result of this multi-year work to address these identified concerns and improve Canada's cybersecurity posture, including in 5G technology, we introduced Bill C-26. Madam Speaker, this bill is intended to promote cybersecurity across four federally regulated critical infrastructure sectors, finance, telecommunications, energy, and transportation. Bill C-26 consists of two very distinct parts. Part 1, which introduces amendments to the Telecommunications Act to add security as a policy objective and create a framework that will allow the federal government to take measures to secure the telecommunications system. And Part 2 introduced the critical Cyber Systems Protection Act to create a regulatory regime requiring designated operators in the finance, telecommunications, energy and transportation sectors to protect their critical cyber systems. As I've mentioned, Madam Speaker, 5G has the potential to be a transformative technology for Canadians. It promises to bring lightning fast internet speeds that are unlike anything we've experienced so far. The benefits in terms of instant real-time connectivity will be immediate and far-reaching for Canadians and Canadian businesses. The COVID-19 global pandemic has underlined the importance of this connectivity, whether it's for virtual classrooms, work from home, or keeping in touch with loved ones. But we have to be absolutely sure that this technology is safe and secure as the technology is rolled out in Canada. Canada already has a system in place to mitigate cybersecurity risks in our existing 3G and 4G slash LTE wireless tel telecommunications network. Since 2013, the Communications Security Establishment the Security Review Program has helped mitigate risks stemming from designated equipment and services under consideration for use in Canadian 3G, 4G LTE communication networks from cyber threats. Like previous generations, 5G technology will have new risks and vulnerabilities that will need to be addressed so that Canadians can realize its full potential. 5G is considered more sensitive than 4G because it will be deeply integrated into Canada's critical infrastructure and economy and will connect many more devices through a complex architecture. The deep integration, greater interconnection and complexity increase both the likelihood and potential impact of threats. That's why an examination of emerging 5G technology and the associated security and economic considerations continues to be very important. The technical agency of the Government of Canada within the Department of Innovation, Science and Economic Development and the safety and security agencies that fall within the public safety portfolio, Global Affairs Canada, National Defence and others are all involved in the federal government's efforts to develop a Made in Canada approach to ensuring the secure rollout of 5G wireless technology. Moving this bill forward will further that vital work. And in the meantime, Madam Speaker, our world-class national security and intelligence agencies continue to protect our country from a wide range of threats. 
As we know, those threats include a growing number of targeted attacks from state and non-state actors, including cyber criminals. Canada's two main national security organizations, CSIS and CSE, which is uh, short for Communication Securities Establishment, are working tirelessly to mitigate these threats. CSIS provides analysis to assist the federal government in understanding cyber threats and the intentions and cap capabilities of cyber actors operating in Canada and abroad who pose a threat to our security. This intelligence helps the government to improve its overall situational awareness, better identify cyber vulnerabilities, prevent cyber espionage or other cyber threat activity, and take action to secure critical infrastructure. For its part, the CSE is always monitoring for threats that may be directed against Canada and Canadians. The CSE is, ho is home to the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity, which was established as a flagship initiative of the 2018 National Cybersecurity Strategy. With the Cyber Centre, Canadians have a clear and trusted place to turn to for cybersecurity issues. It's Canada's authority on technical and operational cybersecurity issues, a single unified source of expert advice, guidance, services and support for the federal government, critical infrastructure owners and operations, the private sector and the Canadian public. It helps to protect and defend Canada's valuable cyber assets. And it works side by side with the private sector and the public sector to solve Canada's most complex cyber issues. For example, the Cyber Centre has partnered with the Canadian Internet Registration Authority on the CIRA Canadian Shield. The Shield is a free protected DNS service that prevents users from connecting to malicious websites that might infect their devices or steal personal information. With the passage of the National Security Act in 2019, Canada's national security and intelligence laws have been modernized and enhanced. As a result, CSIS and the communication security establishment now have authorities they need to address emerging national security threats while ensuring that the charter rights of Canadians are protected. Madam Speaker, these updates are in line with CSIS's mandate of collecting and analyzing threat-related information concerning the security of, of Canada in areas including terrorism, espionage, weapons of mass destruction, cybersecurity, and critical infrastructure protection. The passage of the National Security Act also established standalone legislation for the CSC for the first time ever. With the CSC Act, the CSC retained its previous authorities and received permission to perform additional activities. For example, the CSC is now permitted to use more advanced methods and techniques to gather intelligence from foreign targets. Under the CSC Act, CSC is mandated to degrade, disrupt, influence, respond to, and interfere with the capabilities of those who aspire to exploit our systems and to take action online to defend Canadian networks and proactively stop cyber threats before they reach our systems. It's also permitted to assist DND and the Canadian Armed Forces with cyber operations. Madam Speaker, as Canada's National Police Force, the RCMP also plays a very important cybersecurity role. It leads the investigative response to suspected cy criminal cyber incidents, including those related to national security. Cyber crime investigations are complex and technical in nature. They require specialized investigative skills and a coordinated effort. That is why, as part of Canada's 2018 National Cybersecurity Strategy, and as a second flagship initiative, the RCMP has established the National Cyber Crime Coordination Center, or NC3. The NC3 has been up and running for over a year now. It serves all Canadian law enforcement agencies, and its staff includes RCMP officers and civilians from many backgrounds. Working with law enforcement agencies, government and private sector, the NC3 uh, performs a number of roles, including coordinating cyber uh, crime investigations in Canada. Madam Speaker, all of this is backed up by significant new investments in the two most recent budgets. In Budget 2019, we provided $144.9 million to support the protection of cyber systems, cyber, uh, critical cyber system. Uh, we later invested almost $400 million in creating the Canadian Center for Cybersecurity, the National uh, Cyber Crime Coordination Unit, and increased RCMP enforcement capacity. 
So in conclusion, uh, Madam Speaker, whether it's nationally or internationally, I have full confidence in the abilities of all of those in our national security and intelligence agencies who are working hard day and night to safeguard our cybersecurity and protect us from harm online. And I'm confident Bill C-26 will go a long way to continue doing that. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker.